Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in today's session, we'll see uh, one more topic in operating systems that is inverted page table. So in our previous session, we are discussing about uh, different structures of page table. So how many ways we can structure a page table. So in that, uh, in today's session, we'll see inverted page table. So before going to that inverted page table, just recalling that why we are moving on towards this structure of page table. So because we said that the page table will be residing in the main memory and every process will be having a separate page table and if the page size is larger a number of pages will be more and it is not possible to uh, find out the contiguous entries in the primary memory right for a page table so such that so if our operating system is having some five processes or hundred process so obviously we need to maintain a hundred page tables in a primary memory so that is a main problem okay so it is difficult to find out the uh, contiguous memory for 10 lakhs of uh, entries so that's why we are moving towards these uh, structures of uh, page tables so in our previous session we have seen a hierarchical a page table and then we have seen hashed page table and now we'll, we are moving on with the third category that is a, a inverted page table so without delay let's start so inverted page table so the structure of page table or the page page table hardware is common right see the CPU and this is a logical address where we will be having a two parts one is a page number and another one is a displacement or offset so we are calling it as logical address okay so from this we are getting an entry in the page table so this all already we have discussed all these things right the same thing i'm repeating page table so from this page table it will be giving the frame number corresponding frame number right frame number and the same displacement and this we are calling it as a physical address physical address so sorry this will be pointing towards an entry in the primary memory so this is a primary memory primary memory right so this is what happens here so as we discussed here every process will be having this different page tables so here see for example we are having some three process example right so p1 means a process one which is having one page table and p2 again we are having a one more page table and p3 again we are having one more page table so in our previous session we have discussed that every page table will be having a lot lacks of entries because that depends upon the number of pages so here p1 p2 p3 means a process okay so for example p1 is having some four process uh, i mean four pages okay so this is page one page two page three page four okay and p2 again we are having some three pages page one page two page three and p3 again having we are having some two pages example let us take it two pages so page one page two so three processes and every process having a different pages p1 is having four pages p2 is having three pages and p3 is having two pages so all these three page tables should be reside in the primary memory okay example so for example page 1 is loaded in a frame f0 and page 2 is not available in the primary memory okay so it doesn't mean that every page of a process will be available in the main memory so if the page is not available in the memory then the request will be taken and it will be loaded from the secondary memory for example at a given instance page 1 is loaded in frame 1 frame 0 page 
3 is loaded in frame 4. So page 2 is not available, right? So see. And similarly, page 2 is available in frame 5. Page 2 is available in uh, frame 3, right? So these are the pages available in the primary memory, okay? So in process P1, let us imagine page 2 and page 4 not available in the primary memory. Coming to the page 2, process 2, page 1 and page 3 are not available in the primary memory. Page uh, process P3, page 1 is not available in the primary memory. So even though the pages are not available in the primary memory, it is mandatory that all the page table entries should be available in the primary memory. So this is an empty. Okay, this space is empty. Page 2 and page 4, the space, the entry is uh, empty. Okay, the entry is empty. And in the process P3 page table, this first page entry is empty because it is not allocated to any frame. And coming to the process P2, page 1 and page 3 are empty. The entries are empty because page 1 and page 3 are not available. So, what are the available pages? available pages in primary memory from process 1 page 1 and page 3 from process 2 page 2 from process 3 page 2 right for example these are all only the pages available in the primary memory so as i said that even though the page is available or not the complete page table with all the entries should be available in the primary memory so you can imagine 1 2 3 4 5 total 5 entries are empty in this case three process so three processes in for process p1 two entries are empty Process P2, two entries, two entries are empty. Process P3, one entry is empty. So even though it is empty, we, are, we have to load the complete page table in the primary memory. So there will be a lot of memory which has been wasted. So these entries, the page was not uh, available in the primary memory even though the entry is available. So that means a lot of memory is wasted. Okay, memory is wasted. Right? So, because of storing each and every page table in the primary memory. So, what is the uh, solution for this kind of thing is, so maintaining, maintaining global table, global table. So, what is this global table means? This is a single table which can hold all the pages which are only available in the primary memory. So it will avoid the empty entries in the page tables. Okay. So in this case, see, only these are the pages available in the primary memory. So it will maintain one page table, only one page table. Okay. <clears throat> With all the available pages. So this is a page table, ready? Right? So, this is a page 1, page 3, page 2, page 2. So, only 4. Page 1, page 3, page 2, page 2. Okay. This is the global table. This is a global table. Only these pages are available in the primary memory. So, the global table will be containing only the pages of all the processes, not all the single process. So, all the processes, whatever the pages available in the primary memory, that will be maintained in a global table. Now, the question is, if you want to get the frame number of uh, PG2, page 2. So, here there is a dilemma that this page 2 representing which process? Okay, because these two entries are page 2. These two entries are page 2. So, here we are having a dilemma that which page belongs to which process? So, this page belongs to which process? This page belongs to which process? So, in order to avoid that thing, so it will also maintain one process ID. 
so pid which is a process id every process will be having some unique id so that will be added to this particular thing so one more field will be added and here it will be giving the process id see coming to the page 1 page 2 so this is a process 1 process 1 process 2 process 3 so here coming to the logical address so this will be modified into three parts the last one is a displacement that is a common thing so the first one is a process id pid the next one is a page number process id page number and a displacement okay so with this the entry will be here okay from that the frame number will be added to the given displacement so that we'll be getting the physical address so why we are calling it as inverted page means here the conversion will be done with the help of the frame based indexing so not with respect to the page number with respect to the frame number it will identify the process and page for example this page page 1 so page 1 it is a f0 page 3 it is a f4 page 2 here page 2 f5 and page 2 again with the process p3 it's f3 so this is the frame based indexing so here frame numbers will be acting as a indexes okay so frame number will be acting as an index to identify the corresponding logical address okay so this is a reverse process of regular uh, paging hardware so normally we are using the logical uh, address and from that logical address we are finding out the frame number and we are calculating we are adding the frame number plus a displacement so that we are getting the physical address so the logical that means a page number will be the indexing but here the frame number is an indexing with the help of frame number we are going to identify the page number and a process number process id so that's why we are calling it as a inverted page table okay so hope you understood the main reason of going to this one is every process will be having their own page table and all the page tables will be uh, loaded in the primary memory so it is not mandatory that every page will be loaded in the main memory so some pages will be loaded in the main memory and some pages will not be loaded right so that means there will be an empty entries in the page table empty entries so if there is an entry i mean if there is if the page is available in the primary primary memory then only the entry will be in the page table so in such case there will be a lot of memory wasted so in order to avoid that we are maintaining a global table which will be holding the page numbers which are only available in the primary memory of all the processes and with the help of a pro page numbers we will be identifying the process id also so with the help of these two and uh, mainly with the help of frame indexing it will be identifying the logical address so this is the process done in the inverted page table right so hope you understood this one and uh, so these are the three structures of a page table see the three many these many ways we can structure any page table right so i'll stop here and uh, hope you enjoyed the session and if you really enjoyed the session like my session sh uh, share my session and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much